Let's take a closer look at the new Lamborghini SC63. At the Sebring weekend we could see some interesting details of the car which are different to other LMDH cars. So first of all, instead of using their sister brand's car, the Porsche 963, Lamborghini decided to do it their own way. They chose Ligier as their chassis supplier instead of Multimatic like Porsche. Ligier was the only chassis manufacturer without another customer, so they can fully concentrate on Lamborghini. And they also brought their own engine. A 3.8 liter V8 with cold V, so outside sitting turbochargers. So also very different to the Porsche. So let's start at the front, where we see a very different concept. Lamborghini uses a large front wing element and they decided to use a rear wing flap as the adjustable element to fine tune aero balance. That means they only have a single front wing element without flap. Have a look at my video about the Porsche 963 wind tunnel model to see which trick Porsche used here to increase downforce. So on the Lambo we see a relatively small gap for air to flow in and huge brake ducts. Above we see large openings for the water radiators. If we look at the nose from the back we can see a very smooth underside with no split lines or fixing holes. If we look at it from a bit further up we see how much space the nose is actually blocking. And we see the connectors of the brake cooling ducts. If we look at the car we see that only a small area below is available for the front wing airflow. The flow in the middle is blocked by front axle and brake cooling and the flow above is blocked because of the cooling inlets. If we compare that with the Porsche it's a huge difference. This whole area is open for airflow on the 963 for better extraction and hence more downforce. Although Grosjean talked about pull rod, it looks very much like a push rod front suspension. Special is the far forward sitting cooling inlet for the water radiators. Advantage is that you get clean and undisturbed air in here. Disadvantage is that you also collect lots of tire pickup. And because these channels are so long, there is quite some boundary layer building up which is reducing efficiency of the cooling. Which then means you need larger radiators and larger inlets which cause drag and downforce. The Porsche has the sideboard inlets a lot further back and if you manage your airflow properly you can get good and clean flow there as well. The Lamborghini uses air-to-air -air intercoolers just like Porsche and BMW. So it ended up with the same problem. How to package water radiators and intercoolers in the sideboard? Check out my BMW video to see how they solved that. Lamborghini positioned both above each other, but the intercoolers have a separate inlet. Unfortunately, this inlet sits on top of the bodywork and also collects lots of boundary layer because the flow was in contact with the wall until here for a very long distance already. We can then see nicely the engine bay. You can see the support tube because the engine is not structural and you see the large air-to-air -air intercoolers. Check out my Porsche video to see how they solve this with a very elegant and tight package. So here we have large intercoolers sitting on top. And if the Lambo gets a hit from the side, it's very likely the intercoolers will suffer. Another important point in endurance racing. Because Lamborghini uses an engine with a smaller capacity than BMW or Porsche, they also need more boost to reach the same power and hence need more intercooling. The side tubes of the roof scoop go into the air filter and to the turbos. The center cools the low temperature radiator for the hybrid components. So all in all the Lamborghini is a beautiful LMDH car and they did it their own way. But compared to other LMDH cars and in particular the Porsche, the Lambo Ligier design doesn't seem to be as elegant and efficient. But let's not forget we are talking about a BOP championship. Let me know how you like the Lamborghini SC63 in the comments below and check out my other videos for more.